it is the uh, international day. Well, actually, information and communication technologies have been invaluable uh, than ever. Yet, almost yet, half the world is still offline, and most of those who lack access to digital technology are women and girls in developing countries. So, to mark the International Girls in ICT Day, which aims to increase the representation of girls and women in technology, uh, Amanda Obidike, who's the executive director of STEMI Makers of Africa, joins me in the studio to talk about this. You're very welcome, Amanda. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Um, so, what, what is the? And I think we had you last time when we talked about women in STEM, right? Yes. Science, technology, engineering, and math. So what, what's the uh, significance of today? Okay, thank you so much. So uh, this year's theme of the International Girls in ICT Day is uh, connecting girls to create brighter spaces. So as it is, um, we've seen how COVID pandemic showed us that uh, technology is really invaluable in our lives, in our businesses and all. But women are still underrepresented and there is still a wide digital gap. We have over 31% in Africa and it also um, exists in developing countries. So um, today is not just a day to commemorate the day as it is, but it's a wake up call. It's a call to action to involve schools to be conscious because uh, we've seen that um, we keep on going back and forth that the curriculum is not well integrated and is the, the learning is not blended for girls, but it's a way of um, awakening the teachers to see how we can uh, ignite these girls, inspire these girls to look into careers in technology because technology has come to stay. And um, as it is, the world is moving and they can't wait for Africa to catch up with, with them. Point well made. We had a, we had a special yesterday, a special report on um, on animation. A young lady who's breaking barriers uh, in animation. Our, our rise uh, correspondent, the Defi did that. We talked about that yesterday. So I want to ask you, within that context, are how can governments like you? Talk, you mentioned catching up. They need to catch up. So how can governments like Nigeria or other African nations? How can they do that? How can they make today significant and make it relevant? Okay, we need to start from the foundation. Um, as it is, our curriculum has, is really old and is so theoretical. Everything is becoming so technical, everything is becoming so hands-on. A lot of times you see students, they cram, oh, control C is copy, control D is the leads, but they haven't really applied these applica applications in the real world. So it's about training these teachers to really make sure that these girls are involved, whether girls or boys, they can really have this real world experience, you know, to excel. And also we find out that we have, we lack role models in the society. We had this mentoring program where we called in as many women as possible that can mentor young girls in secondary schools. We found out that there were very, very few of them. So most of them are in their little spaces. They are, not, they are probably not giving back to the society. And on the, other, on the other hand, we have coming from a leaky education system where less women graduated in technology or in science departments. So they are, we have very, very few people who are giving back. So, and you know, a lot of people are not really serving as role models to give these girls the confidence they need. You find out that uh, girls have uh, better retention than boys. You give them like a VR okay. experience. <laughs> they do? <laughs> yeah. Okay, and, okay, no problem. Hey, yeah. carry on, carry on. I won't challenge no, the everyone point. Everyone is doing amazing, but right. girls, you see this commitment. You see the tenacity in what they do. And um, it's also telling in uh, certain uh, school visits that we go to, you know, we give them VR experiences, we give them like an IoT to, you know, apply. And you find out that the girls are really enthusiastic. They want you to come again. They want to see how they can really apply this at home. So it's really promising. And I feel that the government should invest more in it. Good enough, we've been working with uh, international organizations like the U.S. Consulate, who is really big on STEM education, and training these teachers to ensure that these girls can effectively transition from education to being self-reliant. Fantastic. Uh, let me test my own retention now. So you, me you mentioned a lot of things there. <laughs> <laughs> um, need for more mentorship, uh, the need for revamping curriculums, uh, the need for you know more uh, progression with respect to you know, giving them the materials to which they've shown enthusiasm. Yes. Let me start with curriculums. How practical is it to revamp the curriculums in Nigeria's education sector to focus more on ICT? We need to start afresh. Wow. We need to start afresh. From it's, the ground, from the yes. ground up. 
Yes, you see uh, a, a subject like friction, and everybody knows the definition of friction, but they don't know how to apply friction. Mm, mm. It's a worrisome thing. We have incubator programs, I must not lie to you. We take certain curriculum from, uh, say, NASA instructables to ensure that we apply it. Because if we are to use this uh, curriculum, existing curriculum, to design programs, you find out that it's still the same theory that we're going into. No hands-on, no real-world applications, nothing whatsoever. So it starts there. And also, you know, I should still emphasize on the need to train these teachers to groom these girls. Fantastic. Glad you mentioned NASA. NASA uh, extracted oxygen from, yes. from Mars. Fantastic stuff. And it would be nice to see, I think, the number of women that work at NASA. Um, okay, so that's on the curriculum side. The mentors. Um, you, you, would, you would qualify as a mentor, right? So, so how... There's a, I, think it's, I think the issue is the numbers, though. It's few mentors and a lot of girls. So how do yes. you allocate them to be able to, you know, true, true. inspire yeah. these girls? Yes. So, for example, me, I have a lot of mentees. Sometimes it can be so overwhelming uh -huh. for me. But um, what we usually do, we have this program called Project Kungoza. Kungoza is a Swahili name for leading. So we go to universities. We don't wait for professionals to come on board. You could be third year students, final year students across Africa, and we intentionally pair them to young girls in high schools who they can visit like uh, once or twice in a month, you know, talk to them, share their stories. It's more like a peer-to-peer -peer thing. So it's a way of, you know, even if we have very few role models existing in the continent, we are also trying to groom these younger ones to take responsibility because we can't just wait on and um, fold our hands and say we need professionals. We need to start getting them involved even from tertiary institutions. Fantastic. I have to uh, bring up uh, Nigeria's issues. Right here on the cover of today's This Day, uh, we just talked about it in our last segment, uh, power supply subsidy may gulp 3.4 trillion naira by, three, uh, by 2023. That's from the World Bank. And our last guest uh, was talking about you need power for everything, whether yes. it's teaching, whether it's medical sector, manufacturing. Yes. So how do Nigeria's infrastructure challenges factor into what you're trying to do. This is ICT, this is tech. You need power, you need computers, yes. you, need, you know, so yes. how are you managing that? Yes, you know, even in real life, we saw how the outrage last week when everybody was frustrated that uh, Twitter has to headquarter in Ghana, if, right? Yes, apart from security, they're they are looking at power. They're looking at a lot of infrastructure, which unfortunately Nigeria is not measuring up to standard. And because of that, less investments, you know, so our, the future of Nigeria actually depends on our collective efforts, whether from the government, whether from community-led organizations, whether from NGO like myself, putting this together and seeing how we can change this. Look at the story of Rwanda. Rwanda was 10 years down the line. It was so terrible. But a lot of people now anticipate to come in and invest in Rwanda because two years, three years down the line, you are getting your 40% uh, uh, revenue or, you know, um, increase. Right. So we need to uh, be conscious about this. Collective action is really key. Mm. We can't do it alone. Right. Even international organizations that we work with, there's a limit to what we can, they can do. They often advise us that say, Amanda, if you want to really, we really encourage you to uh, work also with local government because it's not just about bringing in the grants for us to work with. This local government or the state government would help to ensure that it's sustainable and is well monitored. Fantastic. I've only got 30 seconds, so quick answer. Has the COVID-19 pandemic, is that also another challenge, or can you overcome it this year with what you're trying to do? Yes, we are overcoming it. Good enough, we are partnering with a lot of organizations, mm. bringing it to schools, because we know that girls don't really have access to internet or, you know, digital devices. Ensuring that, you know, we have these after-school programs to ignite them and, you know, ensure that they are really excited towards them. Fantastic stuff. International Day for ICT for Girls. Amanda Obidike, Executive Director of Makers Africa. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks.